<laughs> what a beautiful rocket ship. Such terrific power. Hello, such Captain marvelous Stewart. speed. Oh, hello, Wilma. What is that great scientific brain of yours working on now? Ah, uh, Wilma, I was just thinking what a beautiful model of a rocket ship this is. You know, Wilma, these new ships have the flash ray. And that flash ray works with the speed of lightning. Why, Wilma, you're going to revolutionize hello, our doctor. interplanetary... Why, well, hello, Buck, uh, old boy. Yes, you know, I was telling Wilma about this ship, how it's going to revolutionize our entire warfare in the interplanetary spaces. You know, Buck, this ship has the new flash ray. I'd like to try that out in space. Well, Buck, it's going to work. And say, Buck, how was that new inter that uh, magnetic ray? I tried it this morning, Doctor. It's wonderful. It works just fine. Why, it'll hold an enemy ship fixed and help us in space, just as though it were tied to mine. I only wish all our ships had that ray. Well, Buck, we... Quick, Buck, the interplanetary code message is coming through. Doctor, decode it. Why, Buck, it's from the golden city on Mars. Tiger men of Mars attacking Earth. King Grollo in command. X, 14, 19C. Sign, Buddy Deering. Why, Buck, it's from Buddy. Those ferocious tiger men are attacking again. Uh, Buck, they've broken their treaty. This means the battle of the universe. Quick, Doctor, signal for action. Buck, I'll get the signals in immediately. Signal Chang Fu to take command of the Eastern Forces. Signal Commander Langhurst to take command of the Western Forces. Have both commanders meet me in battle formation on the Jupiter-Uranus route. Two, four, seven, K, B. Warn all planets in our alliance. Quick, Wilma, into the rocket ship. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye. War. I never expected those fierce tiger men of Mars to attack Earth. Now, their ruler, King Garalo, is treacherous, but I didn't expect him to break that treaty. But I wonder if Rollo hasn't been influenced by somebody. I just wonder. And yet, I wonder if it isn't a trick. I wonder if Rollo isn't going to turn and attack Venus. What I must do is to make a Cosmo radio photograph and get a picture of the war arrow on Mars. I will tune in on the Emperor's Palace of Mars and see where the war arrow points. Yes, the war arrow points to Earth. It's true, the tiger men are coming. It's lucky Buddy Deering found out about this, for now we'll be ready to meet them. And now I must look into my cosmic radio television. There are the Tiger ships now, hundreds of them in the fifth radius, battlers, cruisers. I must look inside the command ship. It's King Rollo in command, the mightiest of the Martians, cruel, scientific. I'll penetrate this ship and see who's inside. It's Killer Kane and Ardala, those arch traitors. I might have known that they'd be back of this attack on Earth. Ah, ah, there goes Buck. Good luck, Buck. The Earth's battle fleet is right behind him. There's Langhurst. Powerful ships, those. Go after them, boys. Go after them. Ah, the Tiger ships are lining up now. Ah, here comes the Earth ships. Why, there's something wrong here. Where's Buck? Buck isn't in command. I don't understand. What's this? Killer Kane is after Buck. Another trick of Killer Kane's, eh? They're destroying our ships. We aren't using the flash rays. This is terrible. <laughs> get away from Kane's paralysis ray, Buck. You've got to get above him, Buck. You've got to get above him. Buck, you've got to get in position for that magnetic ray. There's a flash ray. Our men are using it now. Now we're destroying him. Buck and Killer Kane are even now. Get above him, Buck. 
Get above him, Buck. There goes another tiger ship. And another. Our flash rays are working like lightning now. They destroy everything in their path. Those mighty flash. Buck's getting his range now. Get ready with a magnetic ray, Buck. Get ready with a magnetic ray. What's this? The tiger ships are lining up for new battle. Here they come. Why, they're retreating. They're going back to Mars. They couldn't fan the flash ray. Buck's above him. Use the magnetic ray now, Buck. Look for that ray. Buck, now's your time, Buck. Why don't you use it? Oh, Buck, quick. Buck's got him. The battle's over. Bring Kane to Earth, Buck. Now I'll tune in to Buck's rocket ship. Oh, Buck, wasn't that a battle? Captain Buck Rogers calling Earth. Captain Buck Rogers calling Earth. The Tiger men are defeated. They are in full rout and are turned back to Mars. Have captured Killer Kane and Ardela. Have them in the grip of the magnetic ray and are bringing them to Earth. XC. 497R. Captain Buck Rogers signing off now. Captain Buck Rogers signing off. unknown, into an era of glass cities towering to the sun, and a gigantic space gun rocketing passengers to the moon. Is man never to rest, never to be free, make the space gun the symbol of all that drives us, and destroy it? Now! Watching Sleepcore, Pleasant Dreams.
We've got to get to him somehow. We have to get something and pry it up. They're working at the skylight through the disintegrating room. Very well, fire. Zarkov up first. Down. Grab my legs. Grab a hold of the chain barrel. They'll open up on us again with the electro gun. Your Imperial Highness, the Earth people are trying to release Flash Gordon. I'm afraid they're a little too late. <laughs> alive with guards. We'll never get out that way. How do we get out of here? This way. Master, look there. Then his friends did get here. Yes, but they can't get away. The building is surrounded with guards. The only way off the roof is through the trap door to the engineer's building. Send guards there at once. Yes, Master. Look, there's a ladder. But that takes us back into the powerhouse. Can't help that, Baron. It's the only way out we've got. The earth then. Flash, the guards. They're more on the roof. We're trapped. Stay where you are. All right, Baron, you and Zarkov disarm them. Put them in here. That trap door isn't going to hold out forever. Get going! This way. Flash! The stratostat is over this way. Doc, take her up. Now let's get these manacles off. Welcome, Earthman. 
Our king has been anxious about you. What about our friends, the Earth people? They are safe. I will take you to them at once. to welcome you back to Clay Kingdom. Your friends and I were greatly worried about you. Flash! We thought you'd never get here. What happened? Well, for one thing, we've done what we started out to do. We destroyed the nitron lamp, thanks to Baron and Zarkov. And what of Queen Azura? Can you now force her to lift the curse from my people? Well, I'm sorry, Your Majesty. But Ming stole the black sapphire from me. It was the only protection we had against Queen Azura's magic power. You mean the Black Sapphire has been destroyed? Well, that's what Ming wants Azura to believe, but I'm sure he still has it. Ming could be more merciless than Azura. I fear the clay curse will never be lifted from my people. Ah, but it will, Your Majesty. My friends and I won't consider our work done here on Mars until we have freed your people from that curse. If we can get to the rocket ship in which I flew from the planet Mongo, we stand a much better chance of capturing Azura and forcing her to lift the curse of these play people. But if the forest people captured your rocket ship, it must be heavily guarded. It probably is, but we ought to be able to get to it somehow. What do you say, Flash? Well, at least we can do is try. I realize why the Earthmen came here to fight Ming, but tell me, what brought you to the planet Mars, Prince Baron? The House of Ming and my own ruling house have long been enemies. It was on Mongo that Ming tried to kill my friends from the Earth. Do you remember, Flash? The Emperor of the Universe, it is my right to call a tournament of death. And the Earth man will have to enter it. I will order the tournament to commence at once. Where's my weapon? Your weapon will be presented to you at the arena of death. There you will combat the mighty masked swordsman of Mongo. You may go. Let them begin. Who is your champion, me? The finest swordsman in all Mongo. You'll have to be the best to win from the Earth. Baron! Baron! I'm sorry, Flash. I was forced into this. I might have killed you. Oh, your champion was Prince Baron. Clever trap, Mink, but the Earth Man won. Yes. He won the right to fight the mighty beast of Mongo. And so you see why I've come to Mars to hunt Ming down. I see. Ming the Merciless is well named. You may be sure the prayers of the clay people will go with you on your mission. Captured the Earth people? No, Your Magnificence. They made good their escape. The 
the strutter sled they captured was seen heading towards the forest kingdom. That can mean but one thing. Flash Gordon intends to use the black sapphire to win the support of the forest people. Use every resource in my realm, Ming. My entire army, if necessary. But see to it that Flash Gordon is captured. I must have the black sapphire. I shall not fail your magnificence. people captured me, my rocket ship was left over there, behind the Temple of Caleb. You and Zarkov better check. Happy, you and Dale come with me. We'll, we'll look for it in this direction. Another thing. How can we signal each other? I better not try. First one that finds it comes straight back here. Don't be out longer than an hour. I don't see how you could ever get a rocket ship in here. It may be right over that ridge. I'll have a look up this side. Uh, you and Happy take the other. We'll meet at the end of the ridge. All right, if you say so, Flash. See anything of it, do you, Happy? No, why well, you can't even get a baby carriage in here, let alone a rocket ship. <laughs> Take the Earth Woman to the Temple of Kalu. That way and quickly. <laughs> To the temple, quickly! Hey, Dale! Dale! People got Dale Flash, they're taking her to the Temple of Kalu. Temple of Kalu. I know where that is. Happy. Get back to Baron Zarkov. Tell them to meet me at the temple. I'll do it if it cracks a lung. Stand in the incense of forgetfulness and become a servant of the god Kalu. I only hope the forest people don't get them. Quiet, you'll have every guard in the forest kingdom, Dominus. Did you find the rocket ship? Rocket ship? Nothing. The forest guards have got Dale. They're taking her to the temple of Kalu. Flash wants you to meet him there. Because your people have robbed the god Kalu of the sacred black sapphire, it is your punishment to stand in the incense of forgetfulness 
and to serve him forever. All that you have known shall pass away, and henceforth you will be a temple maiden. You are dedicated to the service of the god Kalu. You must be ready to slay, if necessary, in his defense. You will repeat with me the invocation. Oh, mighty Kalu. Oh, mighty Kalu. They have her in the temple, all right. I dedicate my life to your service. I dedicate my life to your service. Let's rush them. No, we can't get anywhere that way. There's too many of them. I'll try to sneak in alone. I think he's right, Baron. If he does run into trouble, a surprise rush from us might save them both. Here, take this with you. No, it'll be more use to me out here with you. You can cover my getaway with it. For it is written. For it is written. That only by such a sacrifice. That only by such a sacrifice. Can I atone for the wrong that has been done you? Can I atone for the wrong that has been done you? Place your hand upon the sacred dagger. You are now consecrated to the service of Kalu. Our enemy. Quick, Dale. The others are outside. Watching Sleepcore, media for insomnia. is on the air. This is Gene Autry offering another broadcast. Let's go! Now when I want my britches pressed and want my clothes to look the best, I call on Oscar. <laughs> That's me. I call on Oscar. I'm Oscar. And if my seven eats and so by no the guy that got the dope, I call on Pete. I'm Pete. I call on Pete. Yes, sir. Now there's nothing I tell you that these fellows cannot do. If I want the moon or a star or two, I call on Oscar. That's my name. I call on two. I've been there.
you take off your helmet and get a breath of real air? Remind me of someone I've read about. It's the ugly Duchess. is in the death chamber. All is prepared. Build up 200,000 volts for the death chamber. Execute. Guard is being attacked by a surface man's airship. Dispatch an aerial torpedo at once to guide it to the airship's destruction. Yes, Your Majesty. My disintegrating atom smashing machine will be capable of destroying the universe. Westmore Observatory, calling dirigible Shandro. Westmore Observatory, calling dirigible Shandro. Not scared, are you, buddy? Well, I guess I was a little scared before you got above that blizzard. Keep a secret? Yes, sir. 
So was I. <laughs> well, I'm still scared. What for? We're up so high we can hardly breathe. We're about to run out of oxygen. Westmore Observatory, calling dirigible Chandro. All right, flying too low now. Think on any more ice and snow. Calling dirigible Chandro. Westmore Observatory, calling dirigible Chandro. Good, they finally found us. Great, and take the controls. Dirigible Chandro answering. Go ahead, Westmore. I've contacted Miss Buck's voice. Hello, Chandro. Is that Lieutenant Rogers speaking? Buck Rogers to you, Professor. Hello, Dad. We're having a swell time. Are you all right, Buck? Where are you? Okay so far, sir. Still riding above the blizzard. What's your exact position? Can't say. Within about 300 miles, sir, on account of drift. Holding about 40,000 feet elevation. Have to stay here until we ride out the storm area. I think we can do it. Breathing is getting hard. Running low on oxygen, sir. I'm going to drop down a couple of thousand feet. I've got to have air. Throw out ballast. We're losing altitude. We're going to Oregon. Breathe. Are you fool? We're loading down with ice. Maybe too late now to get this weight. Professor, we've dropped down into the storm. Buck's trying to climb out, but he can't make it. What are you going to do? Bail up before we crash! Stop him, Mitchell. He'll freeze to death before he lands. Oh, it's better than dying in here like rats. Do you think there's any chance for them, Professor? I'm afraid they're likely to crash, but there is one chance. Hello, buddy, can you hear me? Yes. Then listen carefully. Do you remember that tank of Nevano gas I put aboard just before you took off? Yes, sir, I do. If you're forced down, will you promise me to turn the lever on that tank as far to the right as you can, buddy? Yes, sir, I will. No, I don't get it. Uh, what is Nevano gas? It's a recent discovery of the professors, uh, a gas that induces suspended animation. Suspended animation? Well, that's a lot of hokum, isn't it? Like uh, perpetual motion and show it. You see that dog? He's been in there nearly three months. Huh. What's strange about that? He's dead, isn't he? He's neither dead nor alive for the time being. do come to life. Here, feel his heart. Why? It's starting to beat. I put a tank of that gas aboard the Chandro as a precautionary measure. If they were forced down in some inaccessible spot, I hoped it would sustain their lives until relief ships could rescue them. What is it, buddy? Buck says we're going to crash. G goodbye, Dad. Ask Buck for his approximate latitude and longitude. Buck, Professor Morgan wants to know your approximate latitude. What's happened? Hello, Chandro. Hurt bad, buddy. Oh, that much. Hello. Hello. Sandro just crashed. Give me your latitude and longitude and turn on the Navano gas. Gas is turned on, sir. Latitude. Latitude about 70 knots, sir. Longitude.
were right, Lacey. The remains of some ancient type of spaceship. Wonder why we never saw it before. I've flown over this place a hundred times. It's probably covered with ice most of the year. Let's take a closer look. Use our disintegrator pistols. Some sort of gas. <laughs> Certainly is an antique. They're in a perfect state of preservation. Must have been frozen since the ship crashed. almost natural temperature. Let's get them out of here. This gas is making me drowsy. Well, uh, take hold of his feet. White! He's alive! Sure I'm alive. What's wrong with you? Uniform. Buddy. Yeah. Buddy, step out of it. Uh, he's all right. Professor Morgan's gas should did the trick. How long have you been looking for us? Why, we weren't looking for you. Now, that doesn't make any difference. You found us anyway. I think we'd better take him to Professor Hure. Our patrol ship is beyond that point of rocks. Now, now wait a minute. March. at least a hundred years ahead of anything I ever saw. I wonder how fast we're going. About a thousand miles an hour at least. Polar Patrol calling operations office. Polar Patrol calling operations office. Operations office. Go ahead, Polar Patrol. Golly, they sure dial in quick. Put this call through to scientist General Hewer. It is urgent. One moment. Go ahead. Captain Rankin speaking. We're approaching the city with two prisoners, found in a dirigible. A dirigible? That's impossible. Such ships haven't been used since the 20th century. 20th century? What does he mean? I don't know. The ship was frozen in the tip of Bering Glacier. The prisoners were in a state of suspended animation when we found them. Bring them directly to me when you land. That is all. General Suspect, sir. You're to come directly to his headquarters. 
Thank you, Lieutenant. Come along, men. So what kind of an elevator is that, anyway? By radioactivity, it breaks down the atoms of the body to their component parts. And reversing polarity reassembles them wherever desired. Take my place, Lieutenant Deering. Follow our spaceship through the televi. How did you come to be in that dirigible? I was in command. We had taken off from New York and were making a transpolar flight around the world when... Uh, what year was that? 1938. 1938? Impossible. Let me verify that. Nineteen thirty-eight. Uh-huh. There was such an expedition. Uh, your name, please. Buck Rogers. A Lieutenant Rogers, officially. And yours, my boy? My name is George Wade. Usually called Buddy. Nirvana Gas. That explains it then. Rankin, we are witnesses to a scientific miracle. By means of a gas discovered by Professor Morgan, these two people have remained in a state of suspended animation for 500 years. 500 years? That, that makes me old enough to be my own great grandfather. But, Professor Hewer, that's impossible, sir. Dr. Hewer, Killer Kane has captured another of our pilots. You may save yourself considerable discomfort by telling me where to find the entrance to the hidden city. I do not remember. I think I know a way to make you remember. Look into that instrument. Look into it. Those men were once pilots of Dr. Hure's ships. Now they are living robots. Men robbed of all willpower while they wear the helmets I had designed for them. Shall I have you measured for a robot's helmet? Or will you tell me where the entrance to the hidden city is? I do not remember. Take him away! I, I, I don't understand, sir. Uh, who is this man called Killer Kane? He is the result of the stupidity of the men of your century. You failed to stamp out lawlessness, and at the end, the criminal became stronger than the law. Racketeers, you call them. Today, they rule the world as cruelly as they ruled their gangs in your day. Well, isn't there any chance of help from an outside source? Well, only from men on some other planet. Another planet? <laughs> that doesn't sound very hopeful. It could be. But our spaceships seem unable to, to slip through Kane's air blockade. We've lost five thus far trying it. You mean you actually have ships that can travel from planet to planet? Of course. But if you have ships that can travel that far, you know, I think I know a way of running that blockade. Well, if you have any plans, I'm willing to listen to them. But to me, it seems much hopeless. Am I right, Marshal Craig, in assuming that you can operate a plane from the ground at such a distance, mind you, by means of radio? That's correct, Rogers. Well, then, sir, why don't you send up such a ship as a decoy? While Kane's patrol is following it, I can slip through in a spaceship and get help from Saturn. We've already lost too many ships and crews. We can't afford to try it. It seems to me you can't afford not to try it, sir. Rogers is right, Marshal. 
Unless we get help from Saturn, our cause is lost. Very well, sir. You're in charge. Thank you very much. Lieutenant Deering, you will go with Rogers to establish a means of communication with Saturn, if you do get through to that planet. Patrol ship 74 calling 60,000 foot patrol. Shall I lay our course directly for Saturn now, Buck? May as well. Hey, Buck, look. They fell for it, all right. How can they fly that spaceship with no one in it? We can direct all the aircraft from the control room until they reach the outer atmosphere. I don't think we'll run into any more trouble. Why don't you take a nap, Wilma? I'll, I'll take the control. Thanks very much. What's that up ahead? Looks like a gray wall. That's the outer atmosphere of Saturn, buddy. It's ten times denser than the air around the Earth. What was that? I don't know. Oh, it's two of Killer Kane's ships coming up fast behind us. Charge your speed to one half. If we do, they'll get away from us. Don't worry about that. They'll either have to slow down or go up in smoke. Oh, the retarding rockets. If we enter that atmosphere at this rate of speed, the friction will bring us to a crisp. Look, they smashed the rockets. I can't buy them. in the oxygen tanks. If they explode, they'll be torn to atoms. Buddy, take the controls. The portholes are giving way, right? That's no use. The heat is melted at the valve heads. It's a move, buddy. There's only one hope for us. Climb above this atmosphere back into outer space. 